When creating a flowchart, there are lots of symbols to choose from, and although you can use any shape or symbol to represent a node on your charts, some symbols have predefined meanings that are common across all flowcharts. Today, we're going to create a simple flowchart using Draw.io, and we'll learn what the most commonly used symbols represent in most flowcharts. Let's start out by going to Draw.io, create a new diagram, and we'll use the blank diagram. Set the name to Simple Flowchart, and click Create. Let's get rid of the grid by deselecting Grid in the View tab. Then let's set the background color. Check the box next to Background, and then click the color box to choose the color. I'm going to use this peach color, FFCCCC. OK, now let's add some symbols to the diagram. We've got a bunch of different libraries that we can use to add symbols from, and since we're creating a flowchart, we're going to use the flowchart library. I'll drop it down, and scroll down so we can focus on this library. The flowchart library contains all of the symbols used in a flowchart, but we're only going to be covering a few of the most commonly used ones here. First, click on the oval symbol, Start, and it's added to the top left corner of our diagram. Next, click the symbol just below that, the terminator. Then go ahead and add the square symbol with rounded corners, process. And then the diamond shape, decision. Finally, click this rectangle with a wavy line on the bottom, document. These are the five symbols we're going to create our flowchart with. The first symbol, the oval, represents the start of a chart. The second, the terminator, represents the end of the chart. It's also common practice to use the terminator as the start symbol as well. So you could have one terminator at the start of the process and another at the end of the process. Whether you use the oval or the terminator, make sure you have a clear start and end point to your diagram. Typically, a diagram will only have one start point and at least one end point. It's not unusual to have multiple end points, but in this example, we're going to have a single start point and a single end point to our diagram. It's a good idea to define the start and end point first, and then fill in the rest of the nodes as you build the chart. So let's drag the start symbol over, and double click it to add some text. I'll enter start. Then drag the terminator symbol down to the bottom of the diagram, and change its text to end. The next symbol is a square with rounded corners. This symbol represents a process or action in your diagram. This would be a concrete step in the overall procedure. For example, design a web page or fix the customer's computer. In our case, we're going to be diagramming the process of a user arriving at a website and accessing their account area. Drag the process symbol below the start point and double click it to edit its text. The first step in the whole process is the user arriving to the website. So I'll enter Arrive to Website. Then drag a connection from the bottom of the start symbol to the top of the first process. When creating flowcharts, always consider the flow of the document. The flow of the document is represented with these arrows at the end of the connections. One of the rules you want to follow, when you can, is to make sure your documents flow from either top to bottom or from left to right. You can make exceptions when it's really necessary, but most of the time, you'll want to stick to these conventions. The next commonly used symbol is the diamond, and it's used to represent a choice or a decision. This is usually a question of some kind, often with a yes or no answer. This symbol causes the path of the diagram to branch, either down a yes path or a no path. If the answer to the question is yes, typically the path will flow from the bottom of the diamond, while an answer of no will send the flow out the right side of the diamond. This is another one of the rules you'll want to try to stick to, although it can be broken when necessary. I'll drag the diamond symbol underneath the process, and make a connection from the bottom of the process to the top of the choice. The arrows show the flow of the path between each of the nodes. Set the text of the choice to User Logged In. We can use text to show the answers of this question to indicate the branch of the path. For that, we'll use the text symbol from the general library. Click text twice to add two text objects to the diagram. Double click the first to edit it and set its text to yes. And set the other text object to say no. We'll follow the convention for an answer of yes to send the path out the bottom of the diamond. So drag the yes text just under the bottom 
Use the guidelines to line up the text and keep it centered. Then drag the no text over to the right corner of the diamond and get it centered up. If the user's not logged in, we're going to prompt them to log in and send them back to the page to check if they're logged in. So we need another process. Select the first process and hover the cursor just outside of the symbol until you see this blue arrow. Hold down Control and click the arrow to clone the symbol and drag it down until it's lined up with the choice. Let's edit the text to say Prompt User to Log In. Then drag a connection between the No text and the new process. You can resize the text to cut down on the space between the text and the line since the line stops at the edge of the entire symbol's width. Then create a connection between the prompt to log in process and the arrive at website process. So the user arrives at the website and we check if they're logged in or not. If they are not, they are prompted to log in and then redirected to arrive at the web page, where again the question will be asked, are they logged in? If no, this loop will repeat until the answer is yes. We just need to create the path for yes. The next symbol we're going to use is the document symbol. This can be used to represent something like a physical document that's created or a report that's generated. Let's say when the user logs in, we're going to log some data about them, like their IP address. We'll use the document to represent this step in the process. Drag the document symbol below the choice diamond and connect the bottom of the yes text to the top of the document. Documents don't have nodes to drag a connection out from them, but you can still connect other symbols to a document by dragging the connection from the other symbol first. Let's add some text to the document. We'll say log IP address. Finally, we'll create one more process where we'll show the user's account page, select one of the process symbols, hold down control, and click the arrow to clone it and drag it down here by the document symbol. You can hold control and scroll out with the mouse wheel to get some more room for the diagram and reposition the terminator to give us some room for the process. I'll change the text of the last process to show user's account page. Drag a connection from the bottom of the process to the top of the terminator. And finally, drag a connection from the top of the process to the bottom of the document. Now the arrow is placed showing the direction of flow, which draw.io determined from the direction we made the connections. Let's change the side of the connection that the arrow is on by selecting the line and adding an arrow to the line start here. Then set the line end arrow to none. And that completes the flow chart. We have a specific start and end point with a branching conditional here in the middle. The user arrives to the website we check if they're logged in, prompt them to log in, then send them back to the start of the process. We check if they're logged in, and if they are, we log their IP address and then display their account page, which is the end of the diagram. Before we save this, let's add some color to it and make it look a little nicer. When you create a flowchart, you have lots of different ways you could go with a color scheme. With a chart like this, I would color code the symbols based on their type. For example, each of these processes would be the same color, while each other type of symbol would have its own color. It adds to the readability of the diagram by giving another visual cue of the purpose of each node. So let's select the start symbol and hold down control to also select the end symbol. Then we can set the color of both symbols at the same time. Click the color box in the fill section and choose a color that you think looks nice. I'll use this purple, B266FF and click Apply. Select each of the process symbols and set the fill for them. I'll choose a shade of green, 66FF66. Select the choice symbol, set its fill, and I'll choose a red, FF0000. Before we set up the color for the document, I want to fix the text inside the choice symbol. It's not lined up the way I want it to be. The text is placed a little too low. With the symbol selected, click on the text tab and under spacing, add about four points to the bottom. That pushes the text up slightly and makes it look a little more even. Finally, select the document symbol, switch back to the style tab and set the fill. I'll use a bright yellow, FFFF00. Then I'll select everything and reposition it on the page. 
Let's drag the Start node over to the left, and the End node off to the right. That looks good. Let's save it. Go to File, Export As, and choose PNG. If we export it with the settings as they are, we can save the PNG file. And when we open it up, the Start and End symbols are right up against the edge of the image. That doesn't look good. So let's export as again. But this time, let's add some space around the diagram with the border width property. I'll set it to 20 and export. Now the image has a small border area around the outer symbols. That covers how to create a simple flowchart in Draw.io. Just remember, the oval symbol represents the start of the diagram, and the terminator represents the start or the end. A square with rounded corners is a process or a predefined action. The diamond represents a choice, a decision, or a question, and causes a branch in the flow. Finally, the rectangle with a wavy line on the bottom represents a document, used for something like a report. Thanks for watching.